product overview. After we finish going through that, uh, we have question and answers at the end of this. So as we're going through the slides, if you have a question that comes up, go ahead and type that into the question box, and we will uh, address those at the end. All righty? So with that, let me give uh, control here to Ty, and we can get started. Uh, thank you very much. And uh, once again, this is going to be um, a high-level overview of Ingenious products, going over some of our core technologies, as well as um, markets that we're involved in, um, and uh, some of those details. So our agenda here for today, uh, we're going to be introducing some of the market drivers for wireless technologies, indoor WLAN, success stories, outdoor WLAN, as well as our easy controller software tool that we launched earlier this year, and then um, the Q&A section at the end. So just a, a quick blurb about Ingenious. I'm sure for uh, people who are familiar with Ingenious technology, this, this is familiar to you. But for those of you who are new, Ingenious is a industry expert in RF communications, uh, specifically in datacom and telecom. Our value proposition is providing affordable long-range wireless solutions um, in, for voice and data. Um, established in 1999, Ingenious Technologies is a subsidiary of Sanao Networks, which is a um, RF-based Taiwan manufacturing company. Uh, they've been around since around 1979 and started with cell phones and, and telecom communications. Just a, a, a quick uh, highlight of the telecom solutions. We'll be going over primarily the datacom solutions today, uh, but we do also have a telecom solution, a, a real you know, basic 900 megahertz analog solution. Uh, and the key there is also long range and, and uh, rugged uh, rugged uh, dyes enclosures that make them very, very durable solutions. Uh, so with that, let's uh, begin the webinar and going over some of our product details. So first to highlight sort of the SMB area where we fit well. Um, basically, Wi-Fi continues to expand in, in public venues, public spots, and with that, um, attracting customers to these public venues has been real key for, um, for those businesses. And Ingenious plays very well in those sections, whether it be our indoor products or outdoor products, providing Wi-Fi access in those areas. As you can see in the slide here, we have an outdoor unit mounted um, there on the outside of the premise, providing Wi-Fi broadcast propagation over to the outside area where, where guests have uh, are located and and the indoor can oftentimes cover those those spots as well um, as you can see there's there's a little smoke detector AP sort of highlighted in this picture but in cases where the R propagation doesn't pass through walls or obstructions properly due to the type of obstructions or materials it has to penetrate through uh, Oftentimes, outdoor products are necessary as well, and that's that's where um, this particular unit um, is located to provide outside uh, Wi-Fi for guests and customers at that location. In addition, expanding larger homes um, with outdoor products as well as our indoor consumer solutions to provide wireless inside is also a key area and, and typically in larger homes uh, it's oftentimes more difficult to cover the whole property with just a single AP. Um, so the outdoor units fit very well in providing not only expanded coverage for outdoor areas um, where you know the laptops, the smartphones and other devices uh, like to connect and uh, get RF um, or Wi-Fi communication, um, but also um, around that access point in indoor areas inside the premise in, in some cases as well.
And another uh, key area where, where our business products play well is, is for interconnecting buildings and a point-to-point -point type of topography or topology or a point-to-multipoint type um, setup. And here we have the ENH 700 EXT, which is our new dual band outdoor access point. I'll be going over that uh, in more detail further down the slides. Uh, however, in this particular configuration, you see the climb bridges communicating directly to the access point in the middle there, um, both in 2.4 and 5 gigahertz. It's a dual, dual band type solution um, to provide uh, communication between the buildings, whether it be voice, video, or data, um, providing connectivity from location to location, interconnecting these, these buildings together. Uh, and and the, alongside with that, in this scenario, we do have, are sh shown in this slide, video cameras that are also added into this um, mix to provide um, the video data streaming back to the central location. Um, more and more we're seeing uh, these type of topology replacing um, solutions previously, whether it be um, having these buildings connected using T1 lines, whether it be um, running copper or fiber, doing some trenching, which oftentimes can become very, very cost prohibitive um, for smaller locations or smaller site businesses. Um, being able to introduce wireless into those uh, scenarios as solutions to not only cut down the cost, but um, to utilize the newer, faster speeds of wireless end uh, to provide long distance, long range powered, high powered links and, and uh, connectivity for these locations has been really, really key. And, and these are some of the areas that we've seen highly uh, being, um, um, I guess, uh, introducing a lot of wireless into those solutions uh, in order to provide um, a solid solution for connecting or connecting these locations. So some success stories real quick. In here we have our indoor AP, the smoke detector AP in this um, hotel over in New York called the Yotel Hotel. Um, they have, they had a need to provide Wi-Fi for all the guests in every single room and um, provide it at a, um, you know, very great customer experience. And so they installed ingenious access points both inside and outside in this particular location to provide Wi-Fi for all of the guests as well as uh, some of the outside areas um, for customers to be able to connect um, wirelessly back to their, their uh, internet access there. And it was really successful. In addition, this is uh, another public use scenario where um, this emergency response type um, deployment was introduced for wireless access. Um, they had some satellite connections going into these vans, um, and this was during the uh, Hurricane Katrina. Um, uh, disaster over there in Louisiana. So um, they they had a, a need to provide wireless for a lot of the emergency response vehicles. So trucks with uh, satellite connections um, and ingenious access points installed in them were utilized to deploy wireless uh, for those emergency response vehicles in order to access um, critical mission critical type systems and and provide connectivity for, for, those, uh, for those users. And, and the final scenario here is an RV park where ingenious outdoor access points were used. Um, this was also sort of a public uh, venue type um, wireless topology. So the access points were um, 5 gigahertz outdoor access points were used as point-to-multipoint links in this particular deployment. 
um, from the central office over to strategic areas surrounding the property. Uh, some of the key things that they had to overcome or issues that they had to overcome was uh, other networks nearby that was that were also broadcasting RF. There are other RV parks nearby that were competing with this um, RV park in terms of providing wireless. Uh, and we all know that there's only so many channels on 2.4. And so uh, in order for them to overcome some of those obstacles, they installed ingenious devices to provide high-powered signal to the client and, and penetrate some of the uh, metal obstructions um, on, on the camper side. Um, not only were access points used to get signal inside those trailers, but um, in addition to that, if people were seeing signal or, or not able to connect back properly, there were also high power clients that were also um, rented to, to guests in order for them to properly capture the signal. So um, those are also some, some of the ingenious uh, consumer solutions that we provide as a high powered USB adapter. And so those the combined solution overall was able to allow guests to get solid internet connection as well as uh, connectivity at all of these locations. So uh, moving along into the indoor wireless lineup, we'll be going over some access points, client bridges, and repeaters. Uh, some of the target markets that we cover um, include hospitality, restaurants, healthcare, education, government, basically any place that requires either long range wireless or a public venue wanting to provide wireless to their guests, basically um, sort of a summary of, of the target markets uh, for our indoor wireless solutions. Uh, without going into all the specific feeds and uh, feeds, uh, Ingenius provides quite a lot of access point and client bridge solutions as you can see here. Uh, they range from either one by one uh, wireless solutions and, and with wireless and um, it be, can, can be a little bit confusing due to the fact that there's so many different speeds and things involved uh, with wireless and technology and, and that's due to the fact that some devices have different numbers of spatial streams whether it be a single spatial stream or three spatial streams, and each spatial stream consists of about um, theoretical speeds of 150 megabits per second, and, and usually that's tied to uh, an antenna for, for diversity as well. Um, so one by one solutions are basically 150 megabits per second because it only has one spatial stream, whereas a two by two would go up to theoretical speeds of 200 meg or, I'm sorry, 300 megabits per second because they offer two spatial streams. So uh, we have basically devices that play in, in, in both those areas, as well as varying degrees of power output, ranging from 500 milliwatts to 800 milliwatt output. And what that means is basically more power means more distance, more coverage for you. Um, we also have client bridges um, below those products. Um, and I forgot to also mention, as you can literally see, the um, indoor APs on the top with a smoke detector have that um, um, seamless uh, enclosure, or I'm sorry, the enclosure that makes it blend well and seamlessly into environments, um, therefore allowing uh, guests to not, not notice these units and, and uh, makes it very well and attractive for people installing them in environments where aesthetics is, is a key factor. Um, and we have quite a lot of those indoor APs that fall um, that have the smoke detector look. And so moving into the client bridges, as you can see, we have varying levels of client bridges as well. Um, the key thing there is the, not only is the enclosure unique and different, but there are also uh, different, um, or I'm sorry, detachable antennas that you could use along with those access points to create the necessary type coverage patterns you need um, if you don't need an omni antenna, you can just simply remove our antennas and either put on a higher gain omni antenna or something that is more of a 90 degree or a, or a 120 degree type antenna to create the um, RF propagation pattern that you'd like in specific locations. There are also different modes 
that our client bridges can be used in, which makes it a lot more flexible. And these are the flexible are the different types of modes that are available with our client bridges. Uh, typically, most people would use them as either an access point or a standard client bridge, and maybe uh, a universal repeater type configuration. But if required, uh, we do also support AP router, client router, and uh, the different WDS modes as well. Uh, WDS is, is more of a proprietary type configuration um, and mode um, for different chipset manufacturers. So uh, they don't really play well between different chipset vendors, uh, like an Ethero's um, doing a WDS connection to a Realtek type uh, chipset. However, you know, using similar products in a similar type configuration, um, these modes can oftentimes be very critical when you're trying to expand wireless in some of the on, on some of the edges of the network where maybe wireless is is not penetrating well by using uh, um, you know some of these bridge modes or WDSAP to station in order to uh, get connectivity out to those the, the edges. Um, it's also sometimes key for transparent bridging for um, for for that particular feature, uh, specifically for VoIP phones and for uh, video cameras that need to pass MAC address information across that link over to um, different types of servers. So some of the unique modes that are available um, with with this with the client bridge products. Uh, to allow for different types of network designs and 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 um, different types of um, topologies to be created. Um, this is just sort of a standard office scenario that we'd like to highlight where our access point is being used and connected into a PoE injector. This is something that you can purchase separately. Uh, our indoor APs don't standard come with. Uh, an injector. Uh, our units do also support 802.3F, so if you have multiple access points in the location uh, and you'd like to use it into a standard PoE switch, uh, our indoor APs will also support that um, as well. And if you notice here, we have different APs in, in different sectors. Uh, one of them, I guess, in the far left would be is being used as a universal repeater to sort of expand the um, wireless signal into the into that area. Um, and your standard clients, whether it be smartphones, laptops, uh, iPads, uh, Kindles, or, or, or cameras, all connecting back to our AP for connectivity in, in this particular environment. Uh, this is a new exciting product for us, it's scheduled to be launched sometime in October, and it's our dual band indoor AP. Um, has a smoke detector look, although it has been tweaked a bit, so it's it's now uh, uh, been renovated and redesigned with uh, more of a uh, sleeker flying saucer type look to it now. Uh, it has concurrent. Uh, 2.4 and 5 gigahertz broadcast um, simultaneously. Um, this is a two by two solution, so 300 megabits per second on both radios. And as with all of our other access points, this is going to be a our, our indoor indoor business class access point. This is going to also be a high power um, ax, um, output power type unit, going up to 800 milliwatts output power on the 2.4 gigahertz side radio. Uh, what's really advantageous about having uh, both 2.4 and 5 gigahertz is the ability to sort of segregate the traffic. Uh, as newer devices, um, laptops have had 5 gigahertz support for a little while now, but as other devices such as iPads um, and, and things like that um, do adopt 5 gigahertz uh, technology for communication, wirelessly, um, there becomes a way to sort of separate and segregate different types of devices for different bands. Um, the iPad 2 and I think the new iPad now both support 5 gigahertz. Uh, I'm not too sure if 
too many smartphones. So there, there can be a situation where you'd want, let's say, employees who you know have those iPads with the 5 gigahertz and laptops that have 5 gigahertz strictly connecting to that band and leaving the 2.4 for, you know, lower, I guess, um, not lower, but, but for public use for devices that only require um, limited speeds for access, such as for um, internet activity and things like that. You would typically be, get better range on 2.4 and 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 uh, better speeds typically on 5 gigahertz. So um, there may be some internal network sharing or type activity that requires more speeds to leave some of those other devices on the 5 gigahertz band rather than 2.4. Uh, another key feature that's unique to, or not unique, but um, is available on all Ingenious APs is the um, different um, the ability to map SSIDs to VLANs, and so having different wireless names for different wireless groups that are separate, segregated, and secured is is one of the nice things that you can do on Ingenious APs. Um, on our EAP 600, we have the ability to do eight SSIDs on each band, whereas on our other solutions. Uh, it's typically four SSIDs, and they're single band, so just you know, pretty much four SSIDs on those APs supported. Um, when it comes to having different types of network traffic and data all run on the same network wirelessly or wired, um, having a way to separate that the uh, different types of um, different devices that are using you know the the network is is very. Uh, very key to uh, maintaining the best network performance and speeds all around. Um, going into more of the, I guess, speeds and feeds details about the EAP 600. Um, again, it's a dual band solution, both 2.4 and 5 gigahertz simultaneous. Uh, has a gigabit port, and it is 802.3 AF and AT supported. Um, we use a Theros chipset, which uh, is known in the industry for being one of the better chipset manufacturers out there for wireless communications. Um, and um, so with that, uh, the different operation modes on, on the AP, as opposed to like our client bridge is just AP, WDS, and repeater modes versus all the other configurations that you see um, on the client bridge side. Um, I'd also like to note that uh, this unit actually has T-Rail mounts, um, whereas the other APs didn't have those T-Rails to mount it uh, on the ceiling, just, just really more of a um, screw it into the ceiling type solution, um, and, and then uh, you know having the AP located there. A uh, quick comparison of the EAP 600 um, and without going into all of the details of the speeds and feeds, um, these all range again from either 20 dBm, which is uh, more of our low-powered solution, all the way up to 29 dBm, which is our high-powered um, solutions, uh, both one by one and and uh, two by two type solutions, as well as dual band two by two solutions. Uh, so moving along to our outdoor wireless products, um, again the different solutions come in, in in varying types of spatial streams. So the left hand side, the 200 AFT and the 200 are both one by one type solutions, whereas the 202 and the 500 are two i two MIMO solutions, um, ranging from 500 to 800 milliwatt power outputs. Um, the, these units have, in many cases, except for the 200 EXT, internal antennas integrated, which makes it a lot simpler for mounting and installing the units. You don't need to worry about uh, resistance on the cables you're running or um, mounting the antenna separately or any of those specific details because it all comes uh, in one single enclosure, um, as well as like you know loss of gain and things like that when when running from 
the radio to an antenna that's externally mounted. Uh, the 500 is our five yard solution where everything else is 2.4. Uh, these are also our 2.4 gigahertz bridge and access point solution. The EXT basically refers to anything that's omnidirectional, whereas anything that does not have EXT is, is um, directional type bridging unit for point to point and point to multi point configurations. Um, whereas the previous solutions were IP55 rated enclosures, these are IP67 rated enclosures, which allow for you to get um, place the units in uh, different environments that may have more severe weather conditions, uh, someplace like a, a marina or like a, a ski resort would, would do well with one of these units as opposed to um, one of the previous models. Uh, not to say they, they wouldn't work, but the enclosure is much more robust to withstand some of the conditions there. Uh, these units happen to have more memory to support more user density or a higher number of users and, and more users' uh, density requirements for, um, I guess, uh, marinas and locations that have a high cluster of people uh, that need wireless all sitting in the same location. And uh, so these are more of our business, I guess, enterprise class solutions versus our um, standard bridges. Uh, we also introduced a new product, the ENH700EXT recently. It's been out for about a, I'd say a month or so. Uh, it has a rugged IP68 rated enclosures. Just like our indoor dual band solution, it is both 2.4 and 5 gigahertz simultaneous uh, on 2x2 two two radios. Uh, IP68 is the best enclosure out there, so there's nothing higher than that. Um, and so it would also do very well in, in some harsher weather condition type environments. Uh, just to go through a little comparison um, of some of our dual band and single band type products, the 700EXT is it's our new flagship unit uh, with both 2.4 and 5 gigahertz support. Um, the seven, it basically replaces the EOR 7550s, the 7535s on this particular sheet. And um, just to give you a basic overview, um, it's both the one by one solutions here with the uh, ENH200 versus all the other solutions, the 210, the 202, 500, and the 700 EXT are, are both two by two MIMOS, are all two by two MIMO solutions, so 300 megabits per second type products. Um, one other unique thing I'd like to mention about the outdoor solutions is that uh, not all of them are 802.3F compliant. Um, most of them are. However, um, I'm sorry, most of them new solutions are. However, some of the older solutions do not come with um, 802.3F um, PoE support. There are PoE units um, but more of a 24 volt proprietary type format. Uh, we do include our power over Ethernet injectors with all of these products. Uh, so there's nothing that you have to purchase additionally. Uh, however, it's something to just sort of make note of that, you know, in a case where you did want to use it with a standard PoE switch, it wouldn't be supported on some of the older solutions. And uh, quickly, the, the Easy Controller software, it's our new AP monitoring solution with lightly managed capability. Um, some of the, this is a free download off our website, but some of the, the things that are neat about this particular software is the ability to, to load in uh, a map and drag and drop APs into different locations just so you understand where you've deployed the products, as well as um, um, having a useful utility that's available it basically works off of SNMP to, to uh, monitor traffic and uh, look at the APs uh, to see the usage, upload, download, as, as well as uptime and things along those lines. So um, all the solutions basically that we went over here um, today pretty much supported by the uh, easy controller software package. And uh, and that's it. So, uh, Jeff, do we have time for any Q&A or? Uh, 
Uh, yeah, we've we've got some a uh, little bit of time for that. Also, one of the things I wanted to note out was with the ENH 700 EXT was when you talked about that being a new product. Actually, we have that in stock and we are shipping that one now. So we're actually good to go with that one as well. Great. Thanks for uh, the update on that, Jim. So that was that. Also. Okay. So if anyone's got any questions, go ahead and shoot them over now. Now with the new software that came out, is that how far back with your legacy products will that work? Um, with your so controller software? Work, yeah, the easy con uh, controller software will work with, the easy way to remember or to um, know which products will, will support the, that software package is anything that has a um, three-digit numbering scheme. So whether it be a EAP, ECB or ENH type product that has three digits uh, or three numbers afterwards. So, for example, 150, 300, 350 will um, in the EAP line will all be supported by the zone controller software. Usually, products older than that have like a four-digit numbering scheme, like 7550 or um, um, 3660. Of course, those then would not be supported. Okay. And are you guys going to be at the Whistlepalooza show? Uh, what what show is that? Whistlepalooza? Yes. Vicky, do you? I actually have our channel marketing. Yeah. Hi. This is Vicky Ballou. Um, I'm not familiar with that, but I can get back with you on that. Oh, well, it, we're going to be attending it next week. It's uh, two weeks in Vegas is what I was asking. Uh, yeah, we're not going to be attending any shows in Vegas in the next coming two weeks. Okay. We we do plan to uh, be at CES in January in Las Vegas. Okay, no problem. Great. Um, that looks like all the questions I have here. So thank you very much for your time from Microcom. If you guys have any questions, you can address those to sales at microcomtech.com or you can contact your sales rep as well as this uh, webinar. We'll put this up. I'm, I've been recording it, so we'll put it up on our YouTube page as well. So if you have any questions, feel free to contact, contact us. Ty, Mike, and Vicki also, thank you very much for putting on the webinar. All right. Thank you, guys, Thanks. for having us. Thanks, Jeff.